Okay, for today it is called finding a vertex. And a typical question has that, which by the way is not vertex form. Otherwise it would be a no-brainer. Okay, vertex form, if I had vertex form for it, would look like this. And I'd be able to say, oh, the vertex is right here, except it's not 3, negative 5. It would be what? Negative 3, negative 5. That's if we had vertex form, but we don't have vertex form. All right. So how do we get a vertex when it's in factored form? All right. So here's what you do. You want to get a picture of what's really happening here. What's really happening here is that this is a parabola. That means it looks kind of like this. Do you get it has a vertex and that's the lowest spot on it? All right. So how do you figure out where that is? Well, with a calculator, I can show you how to do that with a graphing calculator. All right. Now, there's a way to do it without the calculator and there's a way to do it with the calculator. I'm going to pause for just a moment and see if you guys would prefer uh, to learn it with a calculator or without a calculator. I'm going to hold on just a second here. All right, so here's how it's okay. It's fine. Uh, here's how we find the axis of symmetry. You might be thinking axis of symmetry. You said we were going to find the vertex. That's because what? It's that dotted line. Yeah, it runs right down the middle. Now, if you think about that, it runs right down the middle of what? That point and that point. Where are those points coming from? This and this. So, let me make sure I've got this. Oh, shoot. I have... That should be a plus, that should be a minus, from where I put the parabola. Okay, so, do you get the thing that solves this is positive 1. It's always the opposite of this number. Remember me saying you shouldn't trust the thing that's on the inside? And so it's got a minus 1. So plus 1. And that, opposite of that, negative 5 are my two places where it hits. Here's positive 1 right there and here's negative 5. If you average those two numbers you get the line that runs down the middle and that gives you half of your answer. I'm going to say that again. If you average these two solutions positive 1, you don't trust the thing on the inside so it's not negative 1, positive 1 and negative 5, if we average them, that averages to negative 3. Very good. Now, you can maybe even see that by going this way. Do you get that this would be 3 spots away and this would be 3 spots away? Now, if that doesn't work for you, you're going to need a calculator and you're going to need to average positive 1 and negative 5. I'm going to practice that part with you because what that gives you, which is this negative 3 here, is, you remember the vertex is something comma something? It's the average of these two numbers goes here. And you already did it in your head and it was negative 3 and that was very good. And then how do I finish it? I'm going to just be able to finish it right now. That needs to go away. It was okay when I was gone, but not now. Thank you. All right. So if I get the first part here and I figure out that because it's the average of those two numbers, then I take the negative 3 and I stick it in my equation and it tells me the y equals whatever this solves to. So I'm going to clean this up again and get back to where I started and show you how you finish this off from the beginning. Hey, good to see you again. Seems like you just here a few years ago, like one year ago. So we have negative 5, and we have positive 1 are my two solutions. 
which I then average to get this dotted line. Average means add them together, divide by 2. And I end up with negative 3. And then to finish it off, I take that negative 3 and I stick it in my equation and figure out the answer. That would be what? 2. That would be what? Negative 4. 2 times negative 4? Negative 8. There. Now, like I told you, seeing that the first time, you might be like, I don't know what you just did. But after we do a couple together, it's going to be no big deal. Okay, so let's do another one right now. And I'm going to actually hand out the worksheet because I don't need to make up new ones, extra ones on scratch paper because we got plenty right here. Okay, this is actually going to be a two-dayer. So I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, so here is one that's worked through uh, this one. Number two. Everybody look at number two. We are going to be doing the evens today, so look at number two. It says y equals x minus 7 and x minus 3. Remember me saying not to trust the numbers on the inside, and so I'm not using negative 7 and negative 3. I am using positive 7 and positive 3. Now, I want you to know what that means. What that means is that your parabola is touching at 7 and at 3. And what we're finding is the dotted line that runs down the middle of them. So what do you do? You average those two numbers. So grab your calculator and average 7 and 3. Now, if you can do that in your head, which some of you probably can, it's really not that bad. What do you, how do you average them? You add them together. And then what do you guys think we should do? And divide by 2. That's correct. That's how you average. Add them together, divide by 2. Well, I can add them together in my head. What do I get? Nope. What do they add together to 10? And then you divide by 2. <laughs> I'm getting like all these different answers. But yes, some, a lot of people are saying 5, thankfully. Because the answer is 5. Look, think about it. It's what's between 3 and 7, and it certainly isn't 13, and it's not 8 point something. All right, it's just 5. 4.5. Yeah, it's just 5. All right, so now, because these added together to make 10, and then you divide by 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Okay, now what is that? That is the x part of your vertex. Do you get we just figured out the first part? It's 5 comma something. There, so write that down, because now you've got 5, comma, and then you just got to figure out what? How do you figure out the other number? It's not 3. We have to figure out, don't just guess numbers. You attempt to figure out that number. So what you do? Yes, you put it back up where? This is x is 5, right? And I go put it right there and there. 5 and 5. Now again... If you wanted to, you could do that in your head. I bet you it's faster than the calculator. What is 5 minus the 7? Negative 2. Negative 2. And what is this one? 5 minus 3? 2. Positive 2. And you'll notice that they'll always do that. Think about that. They'll always make opposites like that. They did negative 2 and positive 2. Now, it is not a question of what negative 2 plus positive 2 is. This is a times. So it's negative 2 times 2, negative 4 was the correct answer. 5 comma negative 4. Once you work through a few of these with me, I think you're going to feel like it's easy. All right, let's go to number 4. First of all, i got to write the equation down. While I'm doing that, if you can figure out what the zeros or the roots are, those things you can't trust, you know, you can average those and that would be smart. x minus 4 and x minus 10. You know, you might think it's easy, but there's so many steps that people often screw these up. That's a 4, and that's a 10. And now if you average them, what's the average of 4 and 10? We have no, that's what's added, but average them. 7 is correct. If you were to picture this, it would be here's 4 and here's 10, and it's like what's exactly down the middle of them, and that would be 7. Stay with me. We're doing number 4. We just figured out that the average of these guys is 7. That means your vertex, which part did we just figure out? The, the x. The, the first one is 7. Good. And then we got to figure out the other part. Now, 
How do you get, you say it's negative 9, let's find out how you did that. What did you do with the 7? I plugged, plugged it in. You plugged it in, here and here. Did you get negative 3? No, that one's 3, very good. And then did you get negative 3 for that one? Yeah. So 3 and negative 3 makes negative 9. You have the vertex. It's 7 comma negative 9. If I were to draw a picture, it would look like this. And this is where the 7 line was, and this is where 7 negative 9 is your vertex. How do we get the first number? We average these two answers, and we put it here. How do we get the second number? We stuck the 7 in here and there. All right, let's do one more together. And your job is going to be finish up the evens on the worksheet, but I'll do number 6 with you. And it says x minus 6 and can't read x minus 12. I should average positive 6 and positive 12. I can do that in my head. Because I'm good at math. I bet you some of you are too. You add them together, you make 18. Then what do you do? Nine. Divided by 2 makes 9. That's correct. So I already know the first number is 9. Because I can average those in my head. I bet you can too if you th think about it. Just adding two numbers and dividing by 2. Then i got to go stick that 9 back in. It goes back here and here. And what's 9 minus 6? 3. Three. What is 9 minus 12? Three. Notice how they're always opposites. All right, what's 3 times negative 3? Negative 9. So there's your vertex, 9 comma negative 9. I hope you're catching on how this works. Now, I know they get more complicated as we move on, but that's just because the equations become different forms. So let me help you with that. Everybody go to number 10. That's the first time where it's in a different form. On number 10, what the problem is, is it's... You need to take your headphones off there, young man in the back. I need your full attention because there's one you don't know how to do yet. Number 10. Y equals X squared minus 6X plus 5. And you'd be thinking to yourself, this doesn't have those two numbers to average. So what you got to do first is factor it to get those two numbers to average. Do you remember how to factor? We spent a whole day on it the other day. It goes like this, x and x, and then two numbers here and here that multiply to 5. They multiply to 5, so the negative 6 won't work. It has to multiply to 5. Negative 1 and positive 5 do multiply. To, that multiplies to negative 5, though. Oh, okay, but negative 1 and negative 5, is that what you were saying? Okay, good. That's correct. Negative 1 and negative 5 will multiply to this and add to that. I know, that requires you to do two things. <gasps> That's because we're at the end of this semester of quad. And so you're expected to be able to, oh, factoring? I can do that. Can't afford to just like remember it for a week and then forget it. Okay? So you have to be able to factor. And then you can say, what's this one? One. What's this one? Five. Why? Because you don't trust the thing on the inside. Technically. It's because this is the root of this factor is 1, and the root of this factor is 5. So I have 1 and 5, and then I average them. 1 plus 5 is 6, divided by 2 is 3, and I know the 3 is the beginning of my vertex. And the last step is you take that, this number, and you stick it in your equation. I have a hint for you. It's way easier to stick it into this equation than it is to stick it in the other equation. All right? So this one will be 3 minus 1 is 2, and this one will be 3 minus 5, negative 2. Did I mention that they would always be opposites? So I got 2 times negative 2, negative 4. There you go. All right, so that one wasn't factored, so that's what made that one hard. All right. Number 12, that one can be factored. All you have to do is factor an x out of both parts. Number 12 is actually a simple factoring. Number 14 is a tricky factoring, so it's kind of cruel. I think we're going to skip number 14. You guys may cross off number 14. Uh, and then 
Number 16 will factor. Number 18 will factor. And number 20 is laughably easy. I bet you can tell me the answer for the vertex on number 20 in 10 seconds or less. Look at number 20. Negative 1, comma, what? Negative 3. You don't trust the thing on the inside. So it's negative 1, comma, negative 3. All right. Uh, yeah, you are. Um, so those those have to be factored. So like number, which one were you asking about? 18? 16? All right. So I'll help you start number 16. Number 16 says y equals 2x squared plus 16x plus 10. Here's your hint. That's what factor form looks like. And it can't just be x and x because that won't make... 2x squared. 2x and x is correct. And then all you're left with is you got to figure out what two magical numbers. It's probably 5 and 2, but it could be 10 and 1. That will make it work so that that number right there is a 16. I'm not doing it for you. You have to figure out so that you go this times this, and this times that, and this times this, and this times that. It has to all add up to that. The, blue, the green question marks have to multiply to 10. Do you get that? And when it's all multiplied out, the middle term will be 16. It's not that easy anymore. You can't just say it multiplies to 10 and adds to 16. That doesn't work. You have to do all four parts. So if you think it's 5 and 2, you should just try it and do first outside, inside, last. And if it comes out to this, you've got it. And if that's not it, you try something else. If it's not 5 and 2, maybe it's 10 and 1. Maybe this is 10 and this is 1. you got to keep trying things until you find it. That's what makes it a challenge. Because after that, you'll just take the answer from this and the answer from that and then you'll average them, and that will become the first number. Let's say it's 8, and then you stick the number back in to get this other answer. I know, this is tricky stuff. That's why we're spending two days on it. All right. And I'm going to give one more from the top, because I want to make sure my other teacher knows how to do this. You with me? All right, so let me show you uh, one from the top. I am going to do number... Uh, six from the top. So the student that just showed up, look at number six, and you may want to copy this down as an example one. And just so you know how I did it, I know I'm sure you know multiple ways to do these, but let me show show you how this number six would go. It says x minus six, and it says x minus twelve, and this is y. Equals. All right. So here's the process. First of all. You want to know what's the root of this, the thing that makes it equal 0. And that would be 6. x equals 6 is the root of this one. And x equals 12 is the root of the other one. If I want to find the vertex, the vertex is something comma something. And that's a spot where if my roots were 6 and 12, the parabola kind of goes like this. It's a spot that runs right down the middle of the 6 and the 12. So we want to average the 6 and the 12. What do we get when we put those together? We got 18 divided by 2 makes 9. So 9 is that line that runs down, right down the middle of it. Okay? So 9 is the x part of your vertex. And that came from averaging this and this. You with me on that part? Okay. And it's just the average runs right down the middle of 6 and 12. Then, once I have my average there, this is my x equals number. If x equals 9, I can just stick the 9 in this equation. Then do you get, I end up with 9 minus 6 and 9 minus 12. 
So that makes 9 minus 6 is positive 3, and that's negative 3, and those will always be opposites. So 3 and negative 3, and what do I do? It's this times that, right? So 3 times negative 3 makes negative 9. So 9 comma negative 9 is that spot right there. It's tricky, but it's not impossible. You gotta find the line that runs down the middle of these two, that's averaging them, and then you gotta take this answer and stick it back into the equation here and here. And then figure out what it totals up to. And these numbers will always end up being opposites of each other. So in this case, it was three times negative three and it made negative nine. So that's my vertex. I think it's easy to say that that is the most complicated thing that I will teach you this year. And yet I think a bunch of you I think I have it. Raise your hand if you feel like you have it. You've got this down. All right, so there's four of you that think you've got it. But we have another day to practice it. So, all right. That, I'm not going to do all the problems for you. I know number eight is going to not be fun. It's going to be factoring um, that has a negative on the outside. But you still only have two numbers. Put it this way. Uh, I'm not doing that problem. Do you get, though, that this is still negative 8 and this is still positive 8 because that negative on the outside doesn't change anything? It's still, if I want this whole thing to equal 0, then... This part still needs to equal 0, so it's still negative 8. And this part needs to equal 0, so it's still 8. That negative doesn't change a thing. It's doing like all the others. Then those two numbers get averaged. And yes, the average of those two is 0. It, that's strange, but there's got to be some way to get 0, right? So 0 comma something. All right, that's all I have for you for today.